Life is hard. It often tries to kick you, then knock you down, then kick you some more. But you know what? It's not all bad. Let's talk about how not to be defeated by life on today's Project Shadow. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name's Charlie. You might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, especially if you're reading my new book, Crucify My Love, or my sort of new book, The Chain. Hi. I promise today we are not going to delve into the world of self-help gurus and all kinds of crazy stuff. I just wanted to have an honest chat because I like doing that sometimes. But before we get started... If you haven't already, please take a moment to rate this podcast in whatever app you're listening to me on. It really does help out a lot. It tells the algorithms to share me with more people. The more people that listen, the bigger the community. The bigger the community, the more likely we are to interact with each other. And after all, that's what I do this for in the first place. So thank you to everybody who's done that. So yeah, life can be a swift kick in the teeth often. And I know that. <laughs> I really do. And I think a lot of you out there know that too. I, I It's been such a rough decade that I have unfortunately kind of developed this really bad superstition that whenever anything's going well, that, well, something really bad is about to happen. Because it just feels like Every time things are going well, something really bad happens. But you know what? Bad things happen at random. And more than anything else, if I don't get anything through in this episode, that's, to me, the biggest takeaway. Because I'm somebody who sees patterns in everything. I see patterns, whether they're there or whether they're not there, because that's how my mind works. It just constructs a pattern out of everything that's going on around me. And so I have a really nasty habit of constructing patterns that aren't really there. No, my happiness does not make bad things happen. It may feel like it sometimes, but that's not a reality. That's not how it works. Things are hard a lot of the times because, and I'm not going to make this into a political thing, but because of the capitalist structures in which we live, that demand that we spend most of our time working jobs we don't like for other people so that they can make a lot of money, we can make a little bit of money, and be able to pay our bills. And personally, I despise how that has been lumped all together into a giant package lately just to be referred to as adulting. That is not adulting. That is working a job for someone else's benefit so that you can reap a minuscule benefit so that you don't get kicked out of your house, have your power turned off, and have everything that you have taken away from you. That that's not how that that's not adulting. We we pretend it's adulting because it helps us get through the day. More than anything else, though, I think what has affected us as a society is the basic alienation that the powers that be have continuously foisted upon us for their own petty self-interest. We divide ourselves into categories, groups, cliques, based on our religious beliefs or lack thereof, our political opinions or lack thereof, our ethnicity or lack thereof, And all of these things don't matter. I I, I really, I I, I get tired of saying this over and over and over again, because, well, yes, diversity matters. Yes, being who you are matters. 
I have struggled for a very long time to come to some sense of who I am as a person and to find balance and peace with myself over those things that I didn't understand why they were parts of me. And yes, I can define myself by those things. I am queer. I am trans. I am a Star Trek fan. I am a sci-fi fan. I'm an MCU fan. I'm a DC fan. I love Green Lantern. I'm Irish by descent. I've also got some Dutch and English and other stuff in me. But those are not the things that define me. The friends that I have, while not being the thing that define me, are the things that make life worth living. And I have friends that do not understand what trans people are and debate whether we exist or not. And we have conversations about that. Calm, rational conversations about that. And I honestly believe that one day they will come to see the light because they've gotten at least to the point where, oh, well, you do you, but I, I, I just don't know. And that's huge progress. I have friends that are very different politically from me. I have friends that don't like Star Trek, and I have friends that despise Star Wars. Those are honestly some of the hardest ones for me to maintain. I'm a very religious person. I have a lot of friends that are not of the same religion as I am, or avowed atheists, agnostics, and everything else under the sun. Because at the end of the day, if we want to get through, if we don't want to just get beaten up, abused, and thrown away by this life, we have to stop allowing the rancor and division that is seeded into our societies by those who want to take advantage of us from dividing us, from separating us from our common humanity. Because that's really the secret to life. That's the problem that we're facing. Anytime you hear anyone give a speech that's us versus them, immediately ask yourself, what do they get out of this? Because I promise you, you will find some personal benefit on their part. They're not doing it because they believe it. They're doing it because it helps them make money, gain power, something. And that's the dirty secret of how our world really works. And it frustrates me that nobody's talking about it. And well, I can't, I'm not going to say nobody's talking about it, but when people talk about it, they couch it in these horrible political terms that further the othering of people. Yes, there are certain political parties right now that are very big on separating people one from another so that they can maintain power and money and wealth and all of those things. But you know what? I'm not a both sides person, but I can point to you some people on the other side that do the same because power wants to maintain itself. It doesn't matter who has that power or how much power they have. It never ceases to amaze me how little power it takes to go to somebody's head and have them put themselves above others. It's nowhere near as much as it should be. It really isn't. People love to feel that they are superior to others. And we measure ourselves through these horrible, fake criteria of how much money do we make? How many followers do we have? How many friends do we have? How many people know our name? How many people hang on our every word on social media? 
the real thing that we need to be looking for, the real thing that we need to be building so we have a truly sustainable society and world is how many people do we have in our lives that will be there for us through thick and thin that will help us when things go bad, that will be there through the dark times and the light, who will dance when we celebrate and will weep when we are broken. That is the only measure in our lives that really matters. And I'm not naive. I'm not stupid. I know we need to make money and I know we need to do these other things. But we can't let those things distract us from what's really important. The people and the connections that we make with them. That's what really matters. So when I titled this episode, How Not to Be Defeated, it was actually a thought that was going through my head. Because so often, I feel defeated. I do. You know, we own a restaurant, and we got hit really, really hard in the financial crisis. And we have a lot of people that count on us, that we pay their salaries. And so to make sure everybody got paid, we didn't get paid and we went into massive amounts of debt because we needed to make sure that our people were taken care of. And I'm not saying that because I want, you know, adulation or I want people to be like, oh, you're such a good person. I'm saying that because day in and day out there are aspects of everyone's life that go unseen there are little things and big things that people do that no one will ever know and it's hard to judge and it's really difficult because you know there have been times when we hadn't taken a paycheck from our own business for a very long time and we had an employee who I will not name say to my face that we were living well off of their labor. We were living on a a controlled diet so that we could get through. Luckily, I'm living in a family-owned house, so I don't have to worry about rent. We do pay rent, but, you know, if for any reason we can't, it's not that big a deal where I'm living right now. But there's just that assumption that because we owned the place, we were well off when they weren't. When it was the exact opposite way around. And I'm not saying that all of our assumptions about other people are wrong. But we need to be very careful when we're making assumptions at all. The easiest, and I've said this before and I'm going to say it again, the easiest way for life to kick us in the teeth, to knock us down, is to keep us separated, to keep us apart, to keep us from supporting each other in times of need. That's how we lose. That's how we fall apart. That's how the bad guys win. Whatever the bad guys are. The bad guys could be the disease that's come for you. The bad guys could be the depression or the PTSD. The bad guys could be the debt collectors. The bad guys could be The people that unjustly fired you and put you in the position that you're currently in. Bad guys could be anything. But the way they win is when we allow our own bitterness, anger, our own frustration to isolate us from the community of loved ones that could be there for us, that could help us through. Even if it's just moral support, even if it's just going over to somebody else's house for a meal, Whatever it is, we are strong together. 
That's the secret of humanity. That's why we became the top species on the planet. We learned to work together. Not to follow leaders, not to fight each other, not to kill each other. We learn to work together. And in that ability to work together, we became powerful. We became mighty. Because with our words, we could share our thoughts, our understandings, and our grief and our pain with each other. We could hold each other up. We could support each other through the good times and through the bad times. And the world had never seen anything like us before. That is our strength. That is the basic human superpower that we all possess. We can work together. We don't have to be divided. We don't have to be hateful and bitter. We don't have to look for ways to divide and conquer. Because while that might work in the short term, in the long term, that is real weakness. In the long term, that is sowing the seeds of our own destruction so that we will ultimately fail. We can be strong. We can handle anything that comes our way so long as we work together. And I don't know for you all how things are going. And we're not doing that bad. But, you know, times are tough. Times are rough right now. And I know from having hung out with a bunch of my friends over the last weekend from around the country, I think everybody's feeling that pinch right now. I think everybody's feeling that struggle. And while I wish... I could just magically wave a wand and make everything better for everyone. Unfortunately, I'm a muggle and I did not get my letter to Hogwarts, so I can't do that. But I can offer my solace, my support. I can offer my voice and this one thing that I've learned in my life. That while things can get tough, while things can get difficult, while things can be problematic, as long as we stick together, as long as we hold each other up, we can get through anything. I've been through worse than I'm going through now. That's life. But don't confuse the struggle with being an adult. Being a, an adult means that you take responsibility for your own actions and you support others and don't just think of yourself all the time. That's real adulting. And if we're going to stand up and if we're going to get through the hard times, if we're going to get to that better place that we all are striving to reach, we have to reach out to one another. We have to support our friends and our family. We have to build those networks we have to be strong together and we have to find ways to stop allowing ourselves to be separate separate separated from one another it's a hard word to say today for some reason we have to find ways to come together and i'm not saying that i want you to go out and find somebody of the exact diametrically opposed views of you and try to make friends with them because that cannot end well sometimes it has to be mutual you have to both be willing to enter that civil discourse or it won't work but each of us has to find a way to at least be open to the possibility that while someone may be different from us they still could be an ally and they still could be a friend. And once we get to that place, the world will open up. I mean, it will be so much different. 
I know I say it in almost every episode, so I guess I got to say it in this one. Infinite diversity and infinite combination. That is the secret spice of life. And that's how we keep from getting kicked down and staying down. No one's an island. No one did it all on their own. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I just needed to get that off my chest. (laughs) If you did like this episode and you haven't already, please rate this episode or podcast in whatever app you're listening to me on. It really does help out a lot. If, and I feel really weird saying that after the topic of this episode, but if you get a buck you can throw my way in the show notes, you'll find a link to both the Patreon and the Community Support tab. The difference between the two is the people on Patreon occasionally get stuff. If you can join the project right now for as little as a dollar a month, it really does help out immensely. You have no idea. Thank you to everybody who already does that. And thank you to everybody who's even considering doing that. If you don't have any money right now or you don't feel like giving, don't worry about it. That's perfectly all right. But if you know somebody you think would like this episode, please do share it with them. That helps out a lot, too. If you've got a question, comment, or topic you'd like to hear discussed on the show, down in the show notes, you'll find a link that says um, voice message. If you click that, you can leave me a voice message, keep it clean so I can use it on the show. Or you can hit me up on either Twitter or Instagram on CE Dorset on both. Easier to get in touch with me on Twitter. We also have a Facebook page. You can find links to everything that I do over at ProjectShadow.com. Yeah, I think that's it. A lot going on. I hope you're excited for some of the changes. Hope you're excited for some of the new work that's coming because, oh man, I've got so much that I'm wanting to get done. And hopefully I will be getting new stories and stuff out to you very, very shortly. But until next time, don't forget, have the fun. Bye.